Leaders from Facebook and Twitter appeared before the Senate Intelligence Committee yesterday to discuss the role of international interference on their platforms. The committee began looking at the interference about a year ago when it was revealed Russia was using these platforms to undermine the 2016 elections. The committee has since met four times to discuss what went wrong and has taken steps to prevent it from happening again. So joining us now to give us a review of the hearing is Wired Editor-in-Chief and CBS contributor Nick Thompson. Okay, so Nick, at the center of this whole discussion mm -hmm. is how do we stop outside groups from using these platforms to influence us? Are they any closer to figuring that out? They are massively closer. Okay, I mean, that's good news. In 2016, they weren't paying attention to this at all. Mm -hmm. It was not on their radar. In 2017, there was a little bit of backpedaling and denial, it, and now in 2018, they are full on trying to stop at 100%. So it's very hard, mm -hmm. but what they're doing is a combination basically of three things. Setting up artificial intelligence to try to identify patterns that show what's going on. Hiring tons of people, like thousands and thousands and thousands of people to try to identify it. And then also very importantly, and this was kind of news yesterday, relying a lot on outside groups, saying independent security groups. If you find something, tell us. And if you tell us, we will act. And they haven't been quite as forthright about talking about that as they were yesterday. Mm. So there was a lot of talk about bots yesterday. And I want to play a little bit of what the CEO of Twitter, Jack Dorsey, had to say about it. Take sure. a listen. Um, Would that go as far as actually having a, um, a policy on your platform indicating, I wouldn't ask you to take down them, but at least allowing the user to know whether that contact was initiated by a human being versus a machine? As, as far as we can detect them, uh, we can certainly label um, and add context to accounts that come through our API. Where it becomes a lot trickier is where automation is actually scripting our website to look like a human actor. How important is bot security to the upcoming elections? So bot security is really important. There are tons and tons of bots on Twitter and they're amplifying all kinds of messages for aims that we don't understand, right? And so they're actors, foreign and domestic, who will set up hundreds of thousands of accounts and try to flood the conversation in different ways. The hard thing about Warner's question and Dorsey's response is that if Dorsey had an easy way to identify all the bots, he would have done it. He would have yeah. done it. <laughs> right? And that's kind of what he was saying with, with our API. I mean, he sort of had a convoluted way of saying, Senator, that's tough. Mm. If we can find them, we should just kick them off, not label them. Um, so that was, that was his answer there. So Sheryl Sandberg received a lot of uh, questions about Facebook's policy towards hate speech, speech yeah. that incites violence. Let's listen to her response. Finding the line between what is hate speech and what is means for information is very, very difficult, especially if you're dedicated to expressing free expression. And sometimes free expression is expressing things you strongly disagree with. In the case of mis misinformation, what we do is we refer it to third party fact checkers. We don't think we should be the arbiter of what's true and what's false, and we think that's really important. So you talked a little bit about third party uh, groups yeah. kind of helping out. And she explained the dilemma here. We live in a country where you can say pretty much almost anything that you yeah. want to, and that's fine. So tell me about these third party groups. And, you know, in listening to her response, I thought about how Zuckerberg got into a little bit of a pickle when he started to talk about Holocaust deniers and just how complicated it is when a company decides to create those rules. Yeah, so there are a couple of categories here, and they sometimes get crossed up and they're complicated. So there's hate speech, which is easy, and you can delete it. There's fake accounts spreading misinformation. And you can just delete those two, right? If somebody has a fake name, they violated the terms of service. Right. What gets hard is when there's a real human spreading misinformation, either because A, they just happen to be wrong on the internet, which occasionally you're is, entitled is, to be. is a problem. You're allowed, to be, you're allowed to be wrong on the internet, yeah. or they're doing it deliberately. And so then trying to judge exactly what their intentions are and exactly what they put out there is hard. So what they do is they rely somewhat on third party fact checkers. So if somebody puts out a claim, uh, they will send that. If that claim, they put out a claim and it starts to go viral, right? That's what Facebook does. They look at the claims that are going viral. They don't care if you put it out and nobody likes it or shares it. So it's starting to spread on the internet. They may send it to a 